want to greet everyone present and the ones who are watching online with the peace of the Lord. We are here live, transmitting here from straight from the Marain of Domingo Martins. We're participating of the ninth United Family ever since last Thursday. Tomorrow we're going to bring the seminar to an end and participate on the Sunday School and once again the Lord is going to speak deeply with us. We're going to invite everyone to stand up. We're going to read our Bibles, the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21. We're going to read verse 28 together. Luke 21, verse 28. Amen. Yeah, Let's read together. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heart heads, because your redemption draws near. The church may be seated. My brethren, the Word of God, it shows to us perfectly what is prophetic. And as we go deeper into seeking the Lord, we will understand that the prophecy points out to three segments, segments which were being well clarified and well detailed on the event that we had on the 24th, trumpets and feasts. And those segments, they speak about the church and they also speak about Israel and they speak about the world. The church, the faithful church, identifies the prophetic moment in which it is living because the Word of God shows everything for us. And in Revelations we will see that there it speaks of a moment, the moment. And what moment is this? It is a moment called, time called soon. Because this moment in which the church needs to be ready to hear the sounding of the last trumpet for the faithful church, which is the fourth trumpet. That's why the church needs to be living a moment in where the Holy Spirit is speaking to the hearts of the church, where we, as members, as participants, and being called by God, we need to give place to the Holy Spirit to speak with us. The moment of Israel is the same moment of the first coming of the Lord Jesus. They do not understand what moment was this, the moment called time of the time called soon. They are completely uh, without direction, without receiving the revelation of God, without giving heed to what the Holy Spirit is speaking. The world lives their moments, signs, the warnings, the world lives doing what they have always done, what the trumpets that are being blown, first, the second, the third, they show exactly what man is doing with the world. The signs are out there to show this, to confirm that the Word of God is being fulfilled every day. And the text that we read speaks, speaks of a special moment. Look. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads. The church need to be prepared to live this moment. The church needs to be prepared to hear the sounding of the trumpets. The ones who are in the midst in our midst, 
the ones who are participating on the work of the Holy Spirit, the ones who are participating in this moment, called, on this time called soon, they need to be aware and live this moment as, the, the, as a special moment, at the moment in which the Lord Jesus may return at any moment. That's why the Holy Spirit has woken us. That's why the Holy Spirit has been persistent on the Sunday schools, on the events, on the teachings, and everything that the Lord has shown. It all serves to awaken us, to take a moment out of this lack of preparation and placing Him in here. Now, when those things begin to take place, begin uh, to take place, look up. The Word of the Lord shows to us, as we have learned, that everything is, is prepared. All things are already prepared. The moment in which we are living now is the moment of the return, because this is the call of the Lord for the Church, for the faithful Church. The world, many, many are coming up with excuses. Many are placing obstacles, excuses, justifications in order not to be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We see this even on this side of the hunger, the hunger in the world. They blame the economy, the wars. They blame Israel. We see the earthquakes, the climatic change. Everybody comes up with their own excuses, but the faithful church needs to understand and open up their hearts and be living this moment here. When those things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads. Because that is what the Lord is expecting from the faithful church. We're going to put here the text on in Acts that speaks about Stephen. But he, being filled with the Holy Spirit, looking to heaven, saw, saw the glory of God and Jesus that was on the right side of God. My brethren, the faithful church has a point of reference. We have a direction to look to. We have not been forsaken. We are not in the world. Um, living only to do what we want. The Lord took us out of the world and placed us on this path and gave us all the resources that we needed in order to understand and leave the moment of the time called soon. Like Stephen, going through his trials, his difficulties, just about to die because he was preaching the gospel, because he was a servant of God. But Stephen, at this difficult moment, where did he look? To, he looked to heavens because that's where our help comes from. That's where our help, uh, the help of the Lord comes from. And that's where the Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father. This is our reference. That's where we need to look to. That's where we need to place our focus, our eyes, everything that we have. Because the things of the world, they, will, they are fleeting, they will pass. Everything that is material will pass, but what is eternal, the Word of God, the prophecy, the promise that one day we will leave this world and this will remain forever. And for our victory, we need to look only toward, towards God. We cannot look to our sides. We cannot look to our, the difficulties that we face. We cannot look to the circumstance. We can't. The Lord tonight is calling, come, because everything is ready. And this word has exactly this purpose, to give us a direction, to give us a north. Our eyes need to be pointing and always remaining pointed to the Lord. Because if we do, do it like that, the moment in which we are living will be a, the moment of our victory. If we remain with our eyes pointed to the Lord, no one will be able to steal our crown. That's why tonight the Lord wants to speak to our hearts. You who entered here 
in one of the, our churches tonight, you need to look to the Lord. And our prayer as a church is this, that you may have an experience with Jesus and that you may be living this moment It's the only moment, the last moment of your life. Amen. May the Lord bless us. We're going to hear a song of praise. Glory to Jesus. Let's be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. We would like to ask the ushers, deacons, and pastors to proceed giving assistance to our visitors and brethren who are in our churches. And also, if there is any spiritual gift that they may be delivered right now, I'd like to say 
the peace of the Lord to everyone. For me, it was a surprise. A blessing, right? Our pastor is there in, in Victoria. But today, with technology, when I, I became a Christian, my father used to read the Bible a lot. And one day, he read that text that says that Every eye will see him at the return of the Lord Jesus, right? And I questioned it. My father, later on, he became a pastor. He, uh, actually, he came to the pastor, actually. He was around the 70s. There was no internet. It didn't exist. And today, I now understand that the internet today does that. The event, your life, once what the attack on the Twin Towers happened, all the way from Brazil, my sister called me asking me, do you see that? And I answered, no, I didn't. But she was already seen there, all the way from Brazil. So that's how it's going to be the return of the Lord. Everyone will see. It is a moment that need to be paying attention to because in the twinkle of an eye, he will return. When? I, I don't know. But soon, he will return. Amen. The Lord gave a vision here that it was inspected. The car of a man. It was made there, all the inspection of that car. And was found there when they went to inspect the oil, when they, they took out the stick to measure how much oil. And it was half full. And the mechanic said, look, you are running the, a lot of risk for, for the engine to just uh, get damaged permanently. But tonight, he has provided, has given the provision, and there was there, it was placed more oil and was completely filled that reservoir on that engine. And I'd like to remind about the ten virgins. The, there were five that were wise and the five that were not were foolish. They all fell asleep. They were not worried with the moment. And when the time came and some and the, it was said, here comes the groom. Five of them didn't have extra oil, but be aware, my, my brother, that tonight the Lord has been able to reach your life. The Lord gave you a blessing tonight, has renewed your heart, has renewed your walk, because you are the Son of the Lord, and He will not, the Lord will not forsake His children. The Lord will always be with us side by side, because that was the promise. I will be with you to the end of the, the, the times. This promise remains standing. I'd like to invite the church to stand up, bring the service to an end. Lord, we praise your name. We give you praises, Father, for your wonderful grace, for your power, for your mercy, 
that every morning is being renewed in our midst. We praise you, Father, for the return of your Son that is coming near and that you have prepared your people, Lord, for this wonderful day in which we will enter through the heavenly gates and there we will be face to face with our Savior. Blessed be your name. And we ask you, Lord, that you continue with us throughout the remaining, remainder of this year of giving victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. I'd like to also give, in, give assistance to the church and for whomever needs a prayer. Please remain where you are and we will be going towards you. We're going to have also, after the assistance, we're going to have a, a short meeting with the youth there on the upper room. And I'd like to inform the brethren that tomorrow we're going to have a service at 10.30 in the morning. The ones who can, can be here. Be, be prepared tonight so that tomorrow you may be in the house of the Lord. And I want to say the peace of the Lord to everyone.